I'm still not really sure what to do with this room right here, but the office space is coming together pretty well. We have the Strat merch stand right there, the desk, the computer, the new Strat chair. I need to get some artwork on that wall, but overall, it's kind of sort of cool, yeah, maybe, no? Not really. Now my goal for this dingy little warehouse is to turn into this awesome Strad headquarters. That being said, I am leasing the space and so I'm pretty limited on what I really can do. If I could live here, I would, but I can't so I won't. Zoning restrictions restrict that I live here, even though I really want to. I'm not going to. I want to, but I won't. Now the parts room is kind of sort of odd because most of the parts that are in here are for a car that we don't actually own anymore. Ferrari 458 RIP. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. We have some very, very exciting news. She's back, boys. She is back. She's been gone for five weeks, but she is back. The Aventador, or is it Aventador? We still haven't really figured that out. The Aventador was down at Lamborghini Las Vegas because the clutch was slipping like really, really, really bad. I was assuming worst case scenario, we're gonna have to replace it. But to my surprise, it only had two millimeters of wear, which is hardly like anything whatsoever. The transmission is also in very, very good condition. The problem with the car, the reason it was slipping so bad, is the e-gear pump is leaking. So we had to replace that. And that part is very, very, very expensive. Oh my gosh, you're getting strong. There we go. Go get it. Okay, that was left-handed. That was not bad. So we have the service records from Lamborghini Las Vegas. It wasn't very cheap. Oscar, give me that wormy. Give me that one. Give it to me. You are so strong. You're just a marshmallow. Oh, wow. So the Ferrari, as you can see, is still half wrapped. Oscar, wow. How did you, oh, come on. Jeez, okay, whew. We won. Go get it, Oscar. Also, the Bugatti, we still do not have the title quite yet. Um, really no news at all. And then also check this out. We have the Centenario. Steady, steady. I really don't want to bore you guys with all the details, but, um, well, there was a couple open recalls on the car. Those were taken care of free of charge. We had the annual servicing done on the car. Spark plugs, filters, fluids, $5,832. But then the big ticket item was that e-gear pump assembly, $7,934. The water pump was also leaking yet again. I replaced that last summer, had to replace it again for $2,879. We had an additional radiator installed to the car for $3,700. It's the race radiator kit. My car was overheating last summer. It broke down at least, what, two or three times. I'm hoping this is gonna help keep the car cool. So yeah, 3,700 bucks. Grand total out the door parts, labor, sales tax, $21,266.03. Sadly and unfortunately, winter is definitely upon us. We woke up to a bunch of snow here in Utah. It's now raining, which means that summer is effectively over. But we have a really, really cool sponsor of today's video, Vessi. Guys, these shoes are really, really cool. They're 100% waterproof. They're not water resistant, big difference. They're stylish and comfortable. It's like truly an everyday sneaker. Now, today's video has been sponsored by Vessi. Tomorrow's not but I'm still gonna be rocking these shoes every single day because they truly are amazing. You guys might remember last winter, we filmed Houston's Bugatti, we had the spin class, I skied behind it, and my sneakers were wet, I was freezing all day, and this winter, we don't have to worry about that. Check these out. Now, Vessies are made from this cool material called Dymatex. They actually keep your feet cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Whoa, jeez, we're good. <laughs> the thing I love about these shoes, they don't even look waterproof. Like usually waterproof shoes are big and clunky and kind of dumb looking. These are super cool. So I swapped out one of my Vessies for a shoe that's not waterproof because we need to go wash the Aventador Roadster. And go. I want to take a quick moment of silence for my left foot because, well, RIP. It's crazy what a difference these shoes are. Now my left foot is absolutely frozen, but I'm telling you guys, these Vessies are incredible. My right foot is completely dry. What? Now the moment of truth, I already know that my left foot is frozen, and as you can see, well, there's the proof. Right foot, completely dry. How amazing is that? 
I'm completely sold on the vest because like every single day this winter, we're gonna be rocking these shoes because they truly are amazing and they're made using sustainable resources and right now, Vessi is throwing an early Black Friday deal. Check it out, link below, or using my code STRADMAN, get $25 off your first pair. Boys, your feet, your feet are gonna appreciate it. Check out the link below. We have to get the Raptor out of here. We gotta get the Event Store Roadster on the other bin pack, the Veyron also on the bin pack, really for no reason whatsoever, except it just looks sick and I want to get an Instagram photo because finally the cars are starting to come home. This is just so incredibly cool. We are just racing cars to the sky right now. So we got to raise the event to a roadster. We got to get the Bugatti underneath it. We're really doing this for no reason whatsoever other than it's just cool and we're going to get some Instagram photos. And yes, 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 I should be working on unwrapping the Ferrari, but this is just a lot more fun. These bin pack lifts, they just like open up the possibilities. Then we need to talk about this car because this car was in an accident. It has a rebuilt title and that's why we're wide bodying it and not that car. Just gonna push this button right here and let it raise to the sky. It's so cool to see the Aventadors next to each other. I think that's the coolest view we've ever had on the channel. What? What? It looks so sick. As a nine year old kid, I would have never imagined this scenario. The cars look so cool stacked like this. And yes, forget the Ferrari. It's like my arch nemesis. I said it was gonna take three weeks and I'm pretty sure it's been four and we still got another week. This right here was like my childhood dream to have supercars stacked to the sky. Wow, girth nation, we got some girthy, girthy curls. This is so sick, I just like, I'm, I'm just taking a moment to appreciate the view. Wow. If only everything was that easy. As a wise man once said, this is a representation of my life and my future. Whew. July 29th, 2019, I'm reading this article on ZeroToTurbo.com. This past Saturday around 4 a.m. in Chicago, Illinois, the driver of this white Lamborghini Aventador Roadster Pirelli Edition collided with a police officer at high speed. That is my car, which is downstairs. Police say that the Aventador ran a red light. It struck the police cruiser, which was driving through the intersection. The officer involved was sent to the hospital where he was treated and eventually released. The police detained the driver of the Lamborghini for questioning, eventually releasing him at the scene as well. Officers then issued two citations to the driver of the Lamborghini for speeding and disregarding a traffic signal. On July 27, 2019, my Aventador Roadster, which is downstairs, crashed into a police car. And I knew that when I bought the car, I factored that into the decision, and that's why we're wide body a Pirelli Edition Roadster and not the Orange Coupe, and I got a great deal on the car. I just did a quick search on Auto Tempest for Pirelli Edition Roadsters. This one right here, 369.9, that's a coupe. This one for 360, I paid 240,000 for mine. Come on, Oscar, let's go, let's go, come on. And this is why we're gonna twin turbo the coupe and we're wide bodying the roadster because the roadster's already been in an accident, it's already been cut up, it's already been repaired. We might as well go full send on it, whereas the coupe is a clean car, it just needs a couple turbos. This is the first time I've ever bought a salvage car, so kind of sort of nerve wracking. When you're driving the car and you feel something a little off, you're wondering, is that because of the accident or am I just overthinking it? Now obviously the car did not sustain heavy damage. It's purely cosmetic damage up front. You can see the hood, the front bumpers, the headlights, the windshield, the front fenders, all had to be replaced. The roll bars did deploy, but mechanically, the car should be hopefully in pretty good shape. These photos are from the Copart listing. So at Copart, it sold for $163,000 as is. And then I'm not entirely sure who bought the car and repaired it, um, but obviously I bought the car repaired. Uh, let's see, airbags did deploy, you can see right there. Now overall, the car is in very good shape, but there are a few signs here and there that the car wasn't an accident. And that's why it's the perfect wide body car because it's already a storied car. Might as well add to the stories, maybe, no? Yeah, well we're doing it, so I guess it doesn't matter. Now the main dead giveaway is right here on the front bumper in the hood. If you look super closely, you can kind of see that the alignment is not perfect. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. The bumper almost looks a little sunken down compared to the hood. The panel gap right there is not perfection, but with the wide body kit from Liberty Walk, we're getting a new front bumper and a new hood, so 
it kind of sort of didn't matter. And also on the passenger side, if we get on inside, the airbags did deploy and you can notice it right there. We got the warping right here. Those are the only two things though. I mean, for a $120,000 discount, you can't beat it. I'm sure I could find an upholstery shop to fix that. And then the front bumper, the hood, we're gonna replace. But 120K, like twin turbo, it just makes sense because then we can have the best of both worlds. It's just always been my dream to build a Liberty Walk Aventador Roadster. It has to be a Roadster because of the V12, the open top, the visceral experience with those wide body hips. But I love my coupe. I never want to sell that car. And so I couldn't trade it for a Roadster. This opportunity presented itself and I mean, I've always wanted to build a twin turbo as well, but I wouldn't want a twin turbo Liberty Walk car. And so it's really the best of both worlds. I also want to give a shout out to my boy TJ Chapman Auto here in Utah. I bought the car from him. Awesome to work in, work with. He specializes in rebuilt cars. I got a screaming deal on this car, so check it out. I'm going to link him below. So yeah, twin turbo event store, wide body event store. That is a rebuilt title. I'm a little bit nervous about the day when I want to sell this car, but I don't think I'm ever going to sell it. So it doesn't really matter, but maybe it will, but I don't think it's going to matter. I don't know, who cares? I know this process is taking way longer than it should, but the goal is to do one panel a day. So two days ago I did the hood, yesterday I did the driver door, and today, and voila. I know this is taking way longer than it should. In every single video I have a bunch more excuses, but it's nine o'clock, I have another meeting here in 15 minutes. I, I just don't have the time to do it. Also, how crazy is it that my Aventador Roadster ran into a police car in downtown Chicago? Looking at the police report, it doesn't appear that it's a drunk driver because he got ticketed for speeding and reckless driving, and yet at 4 a.m. you'd kind of sort of assume, but not the case. Anyways, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did like squad, be sure to smash that like button, but just like that, this vlog is over, and I'm out.